Welcome to section 15 of Parasites. This is our parasite overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing Ancelostoma duodenale and Nicator americanus, which are both considered hookworms. And you can see both of these organisms right here. This scene will take place on a beach. An elderly person is sitting on the beach and working on his ancestry tree. Ancestry sounds like Ancelostoma. So this is here to help you remember that this image is about Ancelostoma duodenale. Now you can see that we've also added a nectarine tree. Nectarine sounds like Nicator, so this should help you remember that this image is also about Nicator americanus. Now you can see that we've added a guy in the pier who's fishing. At the end of his line, you can see a prominent hook, which is here to help you remember that Ancelostoma and Nicator are hookworms. This is an image of a single hookworm egg right here. Again, it's most important for you to be able to generally recognize that this is an egg from a parasite. Don't get too caught up in the details of the exact structure. For step one, you'll rarely, if ever, be required to make a diagnosis based solely upon a photomicrograph like the one shown here. Next, notice that we've added a couple that has brought their kid to the beach. He's at that age where he just loves certain toys, so you can see that he brought his favorite merry-go-round with him to the beach. The merry-go-round is here to help you remember that Ancelostoma and Nicator are also roundworms, or nematodes. Remember that nectarine tree? Well, it's kind of a pest on the beach because all of the fruit falls on the ground and becomes a booby trap for those who like to walk in the sand barefoot. This poor guy was doing just that when he accidentally stepped in a huge piece of rotting fruit. Pretty gross. In any case, the fruit is clearly smashed into his skin on the bottom of his foot. So this should help you remember that Ancelostoma and Nicator are transmitted via larvae penetration of the skin. You may have also noticed that the kid holding the merry-go-round is also holding a balloon. Unfortunately, one of the balloons popped while they were on the beach, and now you can see it laying there on the ground. As you hopefully know by now, in our images, red balloons represent red blood cells. So the popped red balloon in this image should help you think of anemia. So this part of the scene should help you remember that Ancelostoma and Nicator cause anemia by sucking blood from the intestinal wall. All right, now we've added another guy on the beach who's hunched over. Let's zoom up on him so you can see this better. As you can see, this guy was walking on the beach barefooted when he scraped up his feet pretty badly. Now you can see that he's scratching his foot. And if you look closely at his foot, you can see that he has a tattoo of a snake on it. The fact that he's itching the area around this snake tattoo should help you remember that Ancelostoma and Nicator cause a pruritic maculopapular rash, which is often described as serpiginous. This is an image of a cutaneous lesion caused by a hookworm infection. This is a pretty classic image showing the lesion on the foot right between the toes. Most commonly, the lesion is simply an erythematous moist lesion affecting the foot, as you can see here. However, occasionally it may demonstrate a twisting, snake-like appearance from larvae tracts as the organism migrates intracutaneously. This is not shown in this image, but may definitely show up on step one. All right, moving on, notice that we've added some loafer shoes on the steps going to the beach. These shoes belong to that guy who just stepped in the nectarine. He was so excited to walk around barefoot, but unfortunately, that excitement was short-lived. Maybe he'll clean off the mess and go put his loafer shoes back on. Anyway, just like in the last two videos, the loafer shoes are here to help you remember that Ancelostoma and Nicator cause Loeffler syndrome. This is a diagram showing the life cycle of the four parasites that cause Loeffler syndrome. We discussed this in detail in the last two videos, so I'm not going to walk through everything again. However, you should know that Ancelostoma and Nicator, or the hookworms, exhibit a similar life cycle to Ascaris lumbricoides and Strongyloides stercoralis, which means that they can cause Loeffler syndrome. The larva penetrates the skin, enters the bloodstream, and then penetrates the lungs, causing pulmonary symptoms and eosinophilia. So remember, hookworms cause Loeffler syndrome. All right, let's finish up by discussing treatment. Notice that we've added a pyro on the beach who is having a bit too much fun with the bottle of Pam spray. If your camping experiences were anything like mine, then you probably have a memory or two of that pyro kid who got a bit carried away with something in the fire pit. In any case, just like in our other videos, the pyro kid with the Pam bottle is here to help you remember that hookworms can be treated with pyrantal pamoate. Finally, notice that we've shown another character who appears to be obliviously sitting on his phone. I guess the view of the beach was so captivating that he completely forgot about his phone. The bending, cracked phone should help you remember that hookworms can also be treated with bendazoles. All right, now that we've finished the image, let's review with a question. A 14-year-old boy is brought to the physician due to a persistent cough that began yesterday. The family recently returned from a trip to the beaches of Oregon where the patient walked around barefoot. A complete blood cell count reveals elevated levels of eosinophils, but is otherwise normal. The physician suspects a parasitic infection and orders a stool preparation, but no organisms are seen. What finding will most likely be observed in this patient? A. Conjunctival pallor. B. Diarrhea. C. A chest x-ray with round opacity seen on both lung fields. Or D. Hookworm larvae in the gastrointestinal tract. Okay, hopefully from the question stem you notice that this boy has Loeffler syndrome. We can deduce this because he has a cough after walking around barefoot 
on the beaches of Oregon, he has a CBC that has revealed eosinophilia, and the physician suspects a parasitic infection. With this in mind, the correct answer is C, a chest x-ray with round opacities seen on both lung fields. From this diagram, recall that the normal life cycle of hookworms involves penetration of the skin, migration of the larvae into the bloodstream, and then penetration into the alveoli. It's at this point in the life cycle that the patient is presenting, which is why he has a cough. Therefore, the pathogen may be ascending the trachea, but hasn't yet descended into the gastrointestinal tract. This is why the stool sample is negative. So the patient would most likely present with pulmonary symptoms and an absence of gastrointestinal symptoms. So this part of the life cycle has not occurred yet, which is why we can't see eggs. Therefore, pulmonary abnormalities seen on a chest x-ray would be most likely. From the image, recall that the guy stepping on the nectarine right here is here to help you remember that hookworms are transmitted via larvae penetration of the skin. So just like in the question stem, this commonly occurs when a patient visits a beach or some other location and walks around barefoot. During the early stages of the infection, the patient may present with Loeffler syndrome, which is represented by the loafer shoes right here. If we return to the question, you can see that A, B, and D are all tempting choices because hookworms can cause any of these. However, this patient's cough only started yesterday and his stool sample is negative. Therefore, the pathogen hasn't yet descended into the gastrointestinal tract. So anemia would be unlikely as the pathogen hasn't had enough time yet to cause gastrointestinal bleeding resulting in anemia. So A is incorrect. Likewise, diarrhea and hookworm larvae in the gastrointestinal tract would be unlikely because the pathogen is only in the lungs and trachea at this point in its life cycle. So B and D are incorrect as well. So again, the correct answer is C, a chest x-ray with round opacities seen on both lung fields. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about hookworms.